Hey creeps, it's Cameron again, and welcome back to Library Macabre. Today I'm coming at you from the car macabre. No, this doesn't work. <laughs> I am on the road about to go book shopping. I am at the Dollar Book Swap, which is in Dayton, Ohio. I've been here quite a few times on my channel before, but it's been a while since I've been here and it's been even longer since I've taken you guys along for the ride. The Dollar Book Swap, for those who don't know, is basically a warehouse in Dayton, Ohio that is filled with books. Everything is $1.25. It used to be a dollar, but you know, inflation. I love this store. It is a treasure trove of all kinds of books that I love. You've got uh, all kinds of vintage books. I usually find a bunch of Babysitter's Club, Goosebumps, Sweet Valley, all of those uh, you know, 80s and 90s kids books, which is always what I'm looking for when I come here. It usually takes me like two hours to get through this store. So I'm gonna go ahead and go inside and you guys are gonna come along with me. So let's go. Two minutes and I've already found books. guys I'm back bag number one bag number two bag number three and bag number four which I think is just one thing when I got there as you saw in the video there were all of these big boxes these big crates and bins of books right when you walk in right next to the carts but of course there's this fence there that kind of separates everything so it's technically not for shopping but every single time I've gone in there there's always been something sitting on top and there was a lady there once who was going through everything who worked there and I was like hey is it okay if I grab that and she's like yeah everything's the same price it doesn't really matter there were a couple things I saw on top that I grabbed but there was so much more there were things that were further away that I couldn't reach that I would have loved to have gotten to and I'm sure I could have asked any of the employees and they would have let me dig through those bins and I'm sure I would have found so many great things in fact there's a chance I might actually be stopping back by to go there like later this week or something and I might just ask hey I see a lot of things I want in these boxes is there any way I can dig through those is that okay and I'm sure they'd say yes but anyway I didn't ask there was some plenty to look for as it as it was already let's go through these bags and see what we've got they do have a, a movie section dvds and blu-rays and stuff and everything is still a dollar 25 they don't always have the best movies <laughs> most of it's pretty trashed but um i did find a couple of kind of cheesy horror films from like the early 2000s this one's from 2002 and it even still has like the blockbuster case which is awesome look at this 
still has the Blockbuster receipt. Let's see when this was from. Um, I don't actually see a date on here, unfortunately, but it looks like they rented this crazy as hell and Insomnia starring Al Pacino. So that is very, very cool. I love these cheesy direct-to-video horror films, so I needed to get that. There's another one here. This is actually a Blockbuster exclusive. Uh, so this brings back some memories. Uh, this is called Solstice. It's from the director of The Blair Witch Project, which is one of my favorite movies ever. All right, now we're gonna get into the books. This is called The Little Shop of Horrors. Uh, I believe it's just a magazine, but it features the Blood Beast Terror. I had found some Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys library editions. These are actually extremely valuable. They tend to go for a lot of money online. There are people who collect these editions. I don't actually collect these because I don't think they look very nice. They are a little bit nostalgic to me because my elementary school library had these same editions and I would often check them out from the library and read them, but I don't actually collect these myself, but I couldn't leave them behind because they were only $1.25 each. They did have <laughs> one other uh, Nancy Drew library edition that I, I, I could have grabbed, but there was something sticky and gross on the back cover and it got on my hands and I started gagging <laughs> and then I had to go wash my hands. So I decided to not bother with it uh, and I just put it back. It would have wiped off just fine, but I no. No, I didn't want it. I didn't want it. Here's a cute looking one. This is a Dell Yearling book. It's called Betsy's Busy Summer by Carolyn Haywood. I love these old children's vintage books. Uh, these were the kinds of books that I grew up reading. Seeing this cover just makes me very, very nostalgic. Here's another very nostalgic one for me because I loved these books growing up. I actually read these when I was in kindergarten. This is the Eek series, Stories to Make You Shriek. It's like goosebumps, but it's an easy reader. That was a really great find. I also found another Hardy Boys book here. This is a UK edition, so it's the Crimson Flame. I actually have quite a few of these UK editions, uh, so it's cool to be able to add another one to my library. Uh, <laughs> this was in the science fiction section. Uh, <laughs> it's called an XT called Stanley. I don't buy all of these kinds of books because if I did, it would just keep going and going and going and going and I'd have an entire house full of these books and I don't need that. But I do try to pick up the ones that really grab my eye and I usually do grab the ones that <laughs> skew a little bit sexier on the cover just because it makes me laugh. There are a lot of these old vintage science fiction books where it was clear they weren't selling very well. So they're like, well, let's just slap a half naked person on the cover. <laughs> and there you go. I'm sure it sold pretty well after that. Here's a Caroline B. Cooney. I love Caroline B. Cooney. She wrote The Face on the Milk Carton, which is one of my favorite books. Uh, she's written a lot of quaint horror books. For instance, Freeze Tag, which I just happen to have handy right here. Actually, I have a couple more uh, Caroline B. Cooney. There's Whatever Happened to Janie and Flight 116 is Down. She wrote a lot of different books. She wrote horror, uh, mysteries, thrillers. And this is kind of her time travel series. I don't know if this is the first book. Yeah, I think this might be the third book or the fourth book. You don't usually see hardcover editions of Caroline B. Cooney's books. Oh yeah, here we go. This is one of those books that was sitting on top of those boxes in the front of the store. So I reached over the gate and grabbed it. It's called What's in a Name by Peter Felicia. It just grabbed my eye because you've got these 80s teenagers sitting in the movie theater. It's so good. I love these these vintage paperbacks. They just bring me back to better times. Here's another one that was sitting in one of those boxes. This is a Phyllis Reynolds Naylor book. I love Phyllis Reynolds Naylor. She's written a lot of great ghost stories. She wrote the Shiloh books. So she's a very prolific author. And this is part of her York trilogy, which is a, a spooky book trilogy. We also have a Babysitter's Club book that I have been looking for forever, which is kind of a big book in the series. This is Claudia in the Sad Goodbye, where Claudia ends up losing somebody very close to her. Um, very emotional book in the series and a very notable one. I also found an Alice Hoffman book that I needed. This is, of course, the author of Practical Magic, which is one of my favorite books. Here we go. We have a Girl Talk book. They had a ton of Girl Talk books there. 
I actually own the complete series of Grill Talk. Here are all of my Grill Talk books. So what I want to do is go back and replace like this one here, which has a faded spine. And there are a couple others here in the series that I know need replaced, but most of these are in really great shape. So I'm actually gonna take note of the ones that I need to replace. And then I'm gonna go back to the dollar book swap and I'm gonna get replacements. Got some more books to look at here. We've got Babysitter's Club Mystery, number 36. There was a specific series just for the mysteries. And this is Christy and the Cat Burglar. These later books in the series are way super rare. I also saw this Unicorn Club book, which is a Sweet Valley spinoff. <laughs> this is not gonna appeal to <laughs> everybody who watches my channel for the horror. Here's another Babysitter's Club, number nine, The Ghost at Dawn's House, another <laughs> kind of popular one because it was the first one to deal with ghosts. This is a first print from 1988. I've got another first print here, number six, Chrissy's Big Day, another early book in the series. All right, I showed this one at the store. Here we go, are you ready? I totally bought it. Vampire Lover by Charlotte Lamb. <laughs> this is a Harlequin, Harlequin Plus romance, and it does feature some steamy vampire action on the cover. I had to get it, I, I just had to. Uh, I'm not above buying Harlequin books if they've got some kind of spooky edge to them. Here's another one that I showed at the store. They had another book from this series, but it actually was torn on the back cover. There's a big chunk taken out of it, so I didn't buy that one. We also have a Bentley Little book, The Association. I always grab these Bentley Little hardcovers when I can find them for cheap. And I've actually found quite a few of them at the Dollar Book Swap in recent years. So it's in great shape and for $1.25, I could not pass it up. Here's an Eerie Indiana book, which was one of my favorite shows growing up. This is a very rare book right here. And even though I already own a copy, I wanted to grab it and compare it to mine and make sure I get the one that's in better shape. I love early 90s X-Men. I love the X-Men cartoon. I love the early 90s X-Men comics, which were crazy and bonkers and weird. So I needed to get these ones right here. These are actually middle grade books, so they're not comics. These were published by Bullseye in the early 90s. Here's Nancy Drew, Secret and Old Lace. This is the first print. These are kind of hard to find. I feel like I already have a copy of this, but I went ahead and grabbed it. And if I do have it already, I'll just resell this one because honestly, it's so shiny and new looking. I couldn't pass it up. Night of the Bat by Paul Zendel. If you've not read any of Paul Zendel's creature feature kind of books, you really must. Even though they're for middle grade audiences, they are bloody and violent and gory and disgusting and just totally depraved. And it's everything I loved when I was in middle school. I ate up these books <laughs> when I was in middle school. I felt like I was reading something I shouldn't be reading. There's one called Rats, where you just got these killer rats attacking people in town. The Trolley Car Family, this is an Apple paperback from the 80s, first print in great condition. I love these Apple paperbacks. I have an entire shelf full of them and I am always looking for more to add to my collection. And last but not least, here are two finds that are probably my best finds, but unfortunately I already own these. I, I still wanted to grab them, compare them to my copies to make sure I get the best copy. These are super, super rare and I could not believe that I found them at the Dollar Book Swap. I do wish I could have found some copies that I don't own already because there are a couple that I'm looking for that are just impossible to find. And I'm kind of wondering if maybe they're buried in those boxes at the front of the store. I'm gonna go back, I have to go back. We're gonna go back to the Dollar Book Swap and I am also gonna go to a couple other places as well. I gotta tell you, it's been quite the morning. I got up this morning thinking I was gonna get out early, but it's already 10.25. I had a little bit of an accident. I ended up dropping my phone in the toilet and it's fine. I'm recording with my phone right now. So it all worked out but it was, it was a bit of a panic. Fortunately, these iPhones are kind of made to be waterproof, so it all worked out, but it did get me out of the house a lot later than I thought I would. Uh, it's okay. I've got my green tea here. I'm hoping at some point I can stop by and get some coffee, maybe at a Starbucks or a Dunkin' or something. Oh, train tracks. All right, so dollar book swap first then Books and Company, possibly second in Charles. I'm not sure about that yet. We're gonna see how tired I get. And then when we get home, I'm gonna show you everything I got.
oh my God, oh my God, <laughs> that was amazing. As soon as I got in, I went up to the counter and I said, hi, I see some books in these boxes by the carts that I, I'm actually very interested in. Is there any way I can look through those boxes? And they were like, those are actually books that we give away to teachers for free. Are you a teacher? And I said, no, I'm not. And they were like, well, today you are a teacher and we're gonna give you permission this one time to go back there and dig through the books and they said, make sure you keep them separate from the other books you end up buying today because we can't charge for those books. They're free. So I ended up getting literally like 80 books completely free. Most of the books in those boxes were actually in really bad shape. They were damaged. So that's why they're giving them away for free. But I found some books that were also really, really nice. And I don't know why they were in those boxes to begin with. But I'm so glad that I was able to look through them. I, that was the most fun I've had in the longest time. I also ended up finding a lot of great books just just on the shelves in general. Even though I was just there last week, they had already put out a lot of really great books. So now I'm at Dorothy Lane Market, which is in Dayton. This is not a bookstore. This is actually a really ritzy grocery store in Dayton, Ohio. They actually have the best coffee and the best like little breakfast sandwiches. So what I'm gonna do is go in here and get myself a coffee because, oh my God, I need it. I can't keep living this way. <laughs> I need coffee in me now. And then I'm gonna get myself a breakfast sandwich and maybe even another little treat. Oh my God, they have the most amazing desserts in here. It's incredible, but very expensive, so I can't spend too much money in here. All right, I'm back. And it's so good. Oh my God, it's the best coffee ever. If you're ever in Dayton, Ohio, stop by Dorothy Lane Market. They have the most amazing desserts and they have the most amazing coffee. I am not kidding, guys. It is so good. Mm. Also, look at the sandwich. It's so good and it's so crispy and just delicious. And I, I did have to get a treat. I, I couldn't pass it up. Now they're very much known for their killer brownies. Their brownies are so good. But uh, I ended up getting one of these like cookie sandwich things. Oh my God, I can't wait. I'm gonna eat this right now. out of Second and Charles, and I didn't find very much in there, which is kind of surprising. Usually I walk out with stacks and stacks of books, but it's okay because I've got a whole box full of books right back there. And I got this Nancy Drew Diaries Christmas book. This is like a special edition. This is a first edition, first print from what I can see of uh, Tom Swift and his giant robot. It's book four in the a new Tom Swift Jr. Adventures. And then I also found a really nice copy of Peter Benchley's Amazon, which I've been looking for a nice copy of this for a long time. This actually has like a step back art, nothing too interesting back there, but I've always loved this cover and it's completely embossed and it looks really, really cool. So that was like $2. Now we're gonna head to Books and Company, which is on the way home. So I'll see you there.
All right, just got out of Books and Company. I did get that Stein Tingler's book. It's so cool that it was signed. But I looked on the website and I saw that they had a copy of it on sale for $11. So when I got to the register, I asked him if they were able to price match their website. He's like, no. And I said, all right, well, I'll still get it. Anyway, he also offered me a, uh, a discount club program, which they've always had, and I've signed up for it before. It's like $25 a year something which isn't too bad anyway but I I'm not up here enough it wasn't really worth it for me to have it but he was like no we're doing a free program now where you can get coupons and gift cards for free and I was like oh okay well I'll sign up for that so then he starts to like try to sign me up and he's like oh sorry our computer program's down <laughs> I was like why'd you even offer it then <laughs> I know he didn't know but it's just figures it's like they're always trying to get you to sign up for these programs and then when you finally say okay I'll do it then it's like oh sorry our system is down it's just like the ice cream maker at McDonald's anyway I'm on my way to half price books next uh, we'll see what we can find there and then I'm just going to do my grocery shopping and I'm going to go home because it's already after three o'clock time freaking flies it flies so fast uh, I'll see you guys at Half Price Books. I'm back in my boiling hot car. I got, <laughs> I got a couple books here. Um, I didn't didn't find a whole lot, but I did find a couple of things, mostly on clearance. Actually, <laughs> they're gonna do a 20% off sale starting tomorrow. I was a whole day early, blah. Anyway, I found a first edition copy of The Knife, which is part of the Fear Street series. I do already own one, but mine isn't in the best condition, and this one's basically brand new. So for $2.49, for one of the rarer books in the series. Oh my God, I was so excited to find that. I also got a first edition copy of yet another Tom Swift book. I got one in Second and Charles. I found another one in Half Price Books. This was only $5. It's Tom Swift and his Sonic Boom Trap. It's book 26 in the newer series from like the 50s. This was on clearance and I thought it looked pretty cool. This is Homemade Haunting by Bob Stinnett, and it's like a haunted house book for $3. I've never heard of it, but I wasn't gonna pass it up. Here it's one of those Archie books, uh, Archie Horror. This was only $2 on clearance, Interview with the Vixen. I don't <laughs> like the Riverdale TV show. I liked season one, didn't like the rest of the show. I stopped watching it, it just got on my nerves. But I do actually like the Archie comics and I do like the Archie horror comics. And then this was only $2 and it wasn't even on clearance. It's called Alive. I don't think this is actually a horror book. I think it's a mystery, but it has to do with movies and like the classic monsters in particular. Hey creeps, I'm home. I made it. Now I'm gonna show you all of the books that I got from the Dollar Book Swap, from Half Price Books, and from Books and Company. I actually stopped by Best Buy as well and I got my 4K release of The Nightmare Before Christmas. Believe it or not, I've actually never owned a copy of this movie, ever. <laughs> I've only ever watched it on TV or I've streamed it and I actually had recorded it off of TV as a kid and that was my version that I'd watch for the longest time. So this is actually my very first time owning a nice version of the movie. Now we're gonna get into all of the books I found at the Dollar Book Swap. Like I said, most of these were free. I'm just gonna show you how much there is to go through here. It's an entire box just crammed full of books. This was a wonderful, wonderful find. This one was not free, it was $1.25 and that is Tales from the Brothers Grimm and the Sisters Weird. This is by Vivian uh, Van de Veld or Van de Veld. I actually saw this on eBay recently. It was a paperback copy and it had the same cover and I almost bought it for like five or six dollars. I'm glad I didn't because I didn't realize there's actually a hardcover version with the same cover. This is a first printing, first edition from 1995. It's got some really cool gnarly illustrations and this is actually a collection of spooky stories it says fairy tale endings you're likely not to see 
After growing to a beautiful swan, the ugly duckling pecks all his tormentors to death. The emperor orders the execution of everyone who's seen him naked. The lazy cat, dog, and mouse suffocate the little red hen with her own cake. <laughs> Grimm's fairy tales are actually very dark, so I don't know if those are the original endings or not, but I believe these are kind of rewritten, retooled versions. Here's one I got for free. This is The Witch Who Was Afraid of Witches, and it's just a really cute little easy reader picture book. Here's another that was also free, but it's in pretty bad shape. This is The Mystery of the Nervous Lion, which is one of the Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators mysteries. This is actually a library edition, and I hear the library editions of these are actually also very collectible, uh, but it's got lots of water damage on the inside. Uh, it's not terrible, but it's not great. These were not free. They were also $1.25, but these are nice first edition hardcovers of... Um, what is this series called? Let me look real quick. I don't know if the series actually has a title, but they're all by Lillian Jackson Braun, and she writes this series of cozy mysteries, and each one begins with uh, the phrase, the cat. So we have the cat who tailed a thief, and the cat who taught turkey. There's lots of holiday-themed cozy mysteries in this series. I have quite a few of them that I've not actually read, but I would like to crack into this series at some point. There's also a Halloween themed one and some Christmas themed ones. It looks like a fun series. The Magician and the Spirits. This looks super, super cool. It says Harry Houdini and the Curious Pastime of Communicating with the Dead. Tentacles by Roland Smith. I've heard great things about his books. He's actually written a lot of like creature features for kids. I hear them compared to Paul Zindel's creature features, which are actually like really violent, bloody, gory books written for kids. This is a first edition hardcover. I think I have a paperback. I didn't realize there were hardcover versions, so I'm gonna get rid of my paperback. We also have Frightmares, a creepy collection of scary stories. We actually have these on the bookmobile and they're pretty popular. Just a collection of scary stories. Can't ever have enough of these. A Mom by Magic by Barbara Dillon. I just was totally transfixed by this cover. I like that it's like this mannequin who's coming to life. And I love stories set in malls, obviously. Anastasia on Her Own by Lois Lowry. This is another series she wrote like in the 80s, I think. Not quite as dark as something like Number of the Stars or The Giver. Here's a spooky one. This is by Ruth Chu, who I've actually been collecting a lot of books from. And I'd really like to read some of them soon because I've amassed this collection kind of out of nowhere. I don't know where they all came from. Uh, but this is another one by her. The Witch at the Window looks very cool. Uh, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I saw this and I just had to get it. Uh, this is a young adult contemporary book. It's actually a library copy. I'll need to fix it up. But it seems to be in good shape, actually, other than the stickers. It's called Anything to Win, the novel that exposes the secrets of the locker room and the truth about steroids. So... Uh, yeah, an 80s YA book about steroid use. I also found Grave Doubts, which is a book in the Shocker series by John Peel. This was free. This is a very rare series, and I believe I own all of them now, but I wanted to grab this and compare it to my other copy. I make sure I get the nicer of the two. I also found Classic Mysteries, a collection of mind-bending masterpieces. This is from Lowell House, who did the Scary Stories for Sleepovers books. I try to collect anything I can from this publisher. And I believe this book doesn't just have mysteries. I think there's some spooky stories in here as well. A Treasury of Christmas Stories. This is an Apple paperback. A Hardy Boys Case Files book that I didn't own, and I've actually never seen this cover before. This looks awesome. I love that it's got an invisible man on it. It's so cool. This one's called The Dead Season. Ghosts are always unwelcome guests. Sabrina the Teenage Witch, number nine, A Dog's Life. I feel like I do own a copy of this, uh, but I wasn't sure, and I wasn't going to pass it up since it was free. Here we go. This was a Spine Tingler's book that I really needed. Uh, again, it does have some damage, like the cover is torn. This is actually a third printing, and I try to just collect first printings, but it's so rare, and I've never seen a copy of this other than at the library when I was a kid. Free! It's all free! Dear Diary! <laughs> this one looked great. Uh, this is number three, The Dance. Again, it's it's pretty chewed up. The, the cover's ripped. 
a lot of these books were in pretty bad shape. This actually kind of felt like a rescue mission to me. Like I'm gonna rehabilitate these books. A lot of them are kind of bent and I'll need to press them out. The Chicken Bone Wish by Barbara Giron or Giron. The Runaways by Zilpha Keatley Snyder. I've never read this one before, but I've read a couple other books by this author and she's wonderful, absolutely wonderful. Pen Pals number 11. Roommate Trouble. I, I don't know if I have this one or not, but I didn't want to pass it up. Adventures in Legoland. This is great. It's in terrible, terrible condition, but these books are really rare. I actually saw a couple copies of these books at Half Price Books once, and they were $10 a piece. This is Spellcasters, number one, Witch at the Door. It says there's free nail stickers inside. I don't think they're actually here. No, some kid ripped them out already. It's in bad shape. It's got all kinds of wear and creases, but uh, I needed to have it. Up and Down Spring, another Apple paperback. I don't know why my voice keeps cracking. I'm 30 years old. I'm kind of past that stage in life. Another Ruth Chu, Witch's Cat. Look at that cover. <laughs> They're floating through space in a shoe with a cat. Another Sleepover Friends book, number 15, Stephanie's Big Story. The Unicorn Club, which is actually a Sweet Valley spinoff series. Something Upstairs by Avi. I read this book when I was a kid. And uh, this is actually a first edition hardcover. The dust jacket is torn and there's a name written on the pages, but I'm hoping I can sand this out and then put this in a Mylar dust jacket cover and hopefully uh, it'll look a little nicer. Here are a couple of My America books. These are like a spinoff of the Dear America series, which I actually loved the Dear America books when I was uh, in elementary school. I was never a really big fan of historical fiction, but to me, I felt like these books were actual real diaries, <laughs> and that uh, really intrigued me. They're not real. <laughs> these are actually historical fiction. Now I'm getting really nostalgic for these books again, so I'm trying to collect them whenever I can find them for cheap. Twitches. Twins. Witches. Exactly. This was the basis for the Twitches movies on the Disney Channel. I've never actually read the books before, but they look... Uh, even cheesier than the movies, if that's even possible. Of course, I ended up with a ton of Girl Talk books. These are all replacements. So I made a list of all the ones I have that weren't in the best condition, and I found nice, shiny copies of all of them. I'm not going to go through all of those. I don't want to bore you guys, but they're really cool to me. Replica. This is an early 2000s book series, late 90s book series. It's about like doppelgangers and stuff. Uh, anyways, this is book number 12. It's a special edition. It's called In Search of Andy. And it's got some step back art. Very much like Animorphs. I think that was kind of the inspiration for that series. We've got a babysitter's club, guide to babysitting. Burton's Zoom Zoom the Room Machine by Dorothy Haas. I love, love this cover. Look at that. <laughs> oh my God. <gasps> Guys, oh my God. Oh my God, oh my God. It's signed. It's actually signed. Dated 1993, a signed first edition. This is awesome. And it was free. Oh my God. I thought when I dropped my phone in the toilet that this would be a cursed day and instead it's turned out to be really good. Camp Sunshine Friends, book number one, No Boys Allowed. This one looks uh, very cheesy to me. Rebecca's Summer by Joan Dower Kosmachuk. Machuk? I just behold. <laughs> <laughs> Behold, this is why I like these books so much because they're just cheesy as hell and I love this graphic design. It's wonderful. I believe this is like a Christian fiction. This is part of the Sitting Pretty series. It's called True Blue. I have a couple other books in this series. Nancy Drew, Super Mystery, number three. I didn't even know there was a number three. The Friends Forever series is actually a Babysitter's Club a spinoff series. Number two in the Cedar River Daydreams series, Trouble with a capital T. I actually got this for a friend. This is a uh, biography about Michael, Michael Jackson. This is from 1994. It's a first print. It's got lots of pictures on the inside of Michael Jackson throughout his life. There's a picture of all the Jacksons together. Uh, this one's in terrible shape as well. I mostly grabbed it because I didn't want to forget what this book series is because I want to look it up. This is called The Party Line. It's book number two, Julie's Boy Problem. Another free one here. This is The Bad Spell for the Worst Witch. 
a hardcover first edition of another Lois Lowry book. This is Your Move, JP. Another Friends Forever Babysitter's Club spinoff. This is also a Babysitter's Club spinoff. It's number 12 in the kids in Miss Coleman's class. Oh, here's a rare one. <laughs> this is Worlds of Power. This is another one I got from my friend. Uh, I've been trying to collect these books for him and I saw this in the free bin and I couldn't believe it. <laughs> these are extremely rare and highly sought after and very expensive on eBay. And it was just sitting there chilling out in the free bin and it looks great. It's in really nice condition. Here we go. Last Action Hero. This is a junior novelization of the movie. I love that movie. It's so good. I actually need to watch it again because I've not seen it since I was a kid. Guide to Women. <laughs> Look at this. I love that cover. That's so cute. Super Sleuth, 12 Solve It Yourself Mysteries. Boys School Girls. I guess there are a couple of girls who accidentally got sent to the boys school. This is number one in the series. I've never heard of this before. Got a Spine Chillers book, Stay Away from the Swamp. This is actually like a Christian knockoff of Goosebumps. The Easter Cat. Look at this girl's face. It's like she got caught going up into the attic or something. And there's this weird little cat, which I guess is the Easter cat. It says much better than an Easter bunny. Oh, look at this, this, this looks awesome. This is the Lancaster witch. Look, look, <laughs> it looks so good. Again, it's not in great shape and it's creased, uh, but wasn't gonna pass it up. Uh, here's another Camp Sunshine Friends. This is a special edition Christmas reunion. Caroline Zucker gets even. Uh, another big one. Oh my God, I freaked out when I saw this. This is one of the trophy chillers. These are really rare books. It's called The Chilling Hour, Tales of the Real and Unreal. I have been looking for this for the longest time. And there it was in the free box just looking up at me and I said, yes, come to me, come to me. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Universal Monsters, Dracula. I have the Wolfman of this, uh, from this series. And I was actually thinking, I really want to find the other ones in this series. They all come with posters. So cool, oh my God. By Candace F. Ransom, we've got another really cool cover. This is the Spitball class. By Eve Bunting, we've got Coffin on a Case mystery novel. Emergency Rescue Nightmare at Norton Falls. We've got like a rescue team. I grabbed a couple of these accidental detectives books. I believe these are like a Christian boxcar children kind of deal. Because I'm crazy, I also grabbed some Full House and Mary Kate and Ashley books because they were free. And I, I do collect these sometimes. I don't go too crazy collecting these but I am a fan of Full House and uh, Mary Kate and Ashley has become kind of nostalgic for me, I guess. Uh, <laughs> this is a Halloween version called Dare to Scare. Between Two Worlds, another Apple paperback, a hardcover library edition of Richard Peck's Are You in the House Alone? I already have this edition in paperback and then I actually have a first edition of this book, but it's a good book and this one, doesn't have any library markings other than a little stamp here and it's in great shape and last but not least this is a first edition hardcover from let me check real quick from 1960 this was one of the very first ones i grabbed from the box the secret of fiery gorge it's just a vintage children's mystery kind of like hardy boys boxcar children and there you go there's an empty box. I'm surrounded by books. What a day. I had so much fun looking for all of these. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and for going on a little adventure with me. If you liked this video, please, please don't forget to give me a like down below. It really helps me out and it's a total free way to support the channel. Another free way is to comment down below. Even if you don't have anything to say, you can leave me a pumpkin emoji or just say, hey creep. That works too and it helps to appease the algorithm. If you would like to support this channel further, you can visit my Patreon. It's only $2 a month or $5 a month. You get tons of extra videos. There's over 200 videos over there that you can watch. But just watching my videos is a big help. So thank you to everybody who watches and comments and likes my videos. I really appreciate you and I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll catch you in the next episode of Library Macabre. Later creeps.